Welcome to a new episode of The Good Talk. We're here in studio, West Coast Creative Studio. Today, I am here with Sean Fury and Valley Muscle. What's going on, guys? What's up? Thanks for coming to the studio. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, of course. Uh, We have a lot to talk about today. And uh, first of all, what do you guys think of the studio? I love it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, what was your first impression coming in here? Well set up. Yeah, love the lighting. Uh, very cozy, very I'm comfortable. I'm just gonna say that I'm honest, but it feel like yeah. I'm at home. I feel like I <laughs> could have just you move a little bit. Feel like I'm at home. There we go. Uh, definitely get me at that home feel. The AC is on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when I walk through the front door of my house, it's like, oh yeah. Time to relax. <laughs> I feel like I could, I could spend hours here. For sure. I definitely spend a lot of hours yeah. in the studio uh, doing a lot of work and doing a lot of podcasts for other people. And mm-hmm. this podcast, The Good Talk, for myself as well. So this is where you guys are now, The Good Talk Podcast. Yeah. That's awesome. So I want to get into it. I want to learn more about you guys. And so let's go ahead and start with a little introduction. Sure. And tell me, let's start with you, Sean. Okay. A little introduction of who you are, yeah. what you do, and where you're from. And same thing with you, Valley, right after Sean. All right. So to be completely straightforward, my name is Sean Fury. I am from New Jersey. Been in Los Angeles for the past eight years. And so far as what I do, I am a filmmaker and a athlete. Um, so I'm looking to actually merge the two passions, filmmaking and and sports. And by doing so, telling the greatest story within the fitness industry, which is the rise of natural bodybuilding, starring Sean Fury and Valley Muscle. So you're a natty. I am. <laughs> First I am. question, right <laughs> off the bat. Let's break the ice. I love yeah, it. Right. Yeah. You're a natty. I, I am 100% natty. And, you know, the interesting thing about having a career as a natural bodybuilder is like the better you look, the more people don't want to believe that you are natural, yeah. which is like a very, it's like a compliment. But then at the same time, it diminishes the your whole purpose. Like my whole philosophy is natural. And it's it's not for any other reason beyond inherently, I believe that I can do great things as a natural athlete. So there is no incentive to take steroids. I want to tell a story. I want to show a message as to what a person can achieve naturally. Great. Too. What about you, Valley? Tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, to begin, first of all, is Valley your your real name too? No, uh, my my real name is Deontay Ware. Uh, the Valley just stems off of where I come from. Um, from the San Fernando Valley, so I represent where I come from. I also grew up in the Antelope Valley, so I got two Y's in my name. So the two Y's represents either one of the valleys. Like you know, get what I'm saying. So, so I'm from the San Fernando Valley, lived and grew up out there, had some time out in the uh, Lancaster, Palmdale area growing up as a kid too. Um, besides that, man, um, I'm 32. I'm a high school football coach. I uh, love what I do. I love to be around the kids and uh, feel like I'm a fitness professional. Um, feel like I've stepped away from training and doing a lot of stuff like that. And I'm just like more trying to use my lane to motivate people. That's that's incredible. So you're a football coach. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I started honestly. I started doing that fresh out of high school. I was training. So I was training like the Pop Warner Pop Warner uh, leagues. That my little brother was playing for. Did that for about three years, and uh, end up getting married. <laughs> end up getting married. Long story about that. End up getting married ever. But now I end up like finding my passion when I came back home with my parents and uh, got into it with my little cousin who was a top ring running back at the time and from there it was like it just wrote itself I got around his friends and I was in the fitness game for about a year and a half until I got around them and my purpose kind of like started getting started becoming more of kind of like finding more of what my purpose was being around them okay you know so saying? they give you that that purpose yeah that's awesome because I was just working out just to work out yeah. at the time you know what I'm saying like because it was a mental thing yeah Sean where are you from Jersey your jersey, mm-hmm. okay. Jersey yeah. baby, jersey. Wow. So, uh, well, you you were born there, born and raised. Uh, stayed out there until twenty two, <clears throat> twenty three, and that's when I came over to Los Angeles. Got to Los Angeles, and I was homeless for the first four months. Um, made some connections, even at that low level, and hit the ground running. Haven't looked back ever since. Wow, you're homeless for four months. When you yeah. say homeless, do you Get mean you were like? No way. He was yeah. living, he was really? Shelters. So not yeah. homeless as in like you were just like surfing and people's no. couches and like no. some friends. Nowhere to stay. Yeah. So and did you guys know each other? I didn't even know him. Uh, he no. would, uh, if he if he didn't know me, bro, that wouldn't but, have happened. But so wait, what sense, year was this? This was a uh, shit. Fuck. Eight years ago. Uh, I'm terrible at math. 2016. It just sounds like right. That. It sounds right. Yeah, I think it's so. 2024. Like yeah, well, okay. what's crazy is that yeah. your reaction to that is like you don't it's like this crazy, huh? That is crazy. Because when I first 
heard him say that shit, I'm like, bro, that's you're lying because yeah. I'm like, bro, your spirit is doesn't seem broken. People and, and, that come from that seem more broken. And what's interesting about that, I, I've got. I made one significant friend and he's like a day one. Uh, oh, that, Vito. You know, yeah. Vito. Shout, shout out, out Vito. my dog, Vito. Um, I met him at the shelter and we had very different experiences of being homeless. He had a son. Okay. So, you know, every time that he goes out to, he gets on the bus to visit his son at his, uh, you know, his mother's place, he's coming back to the shelter and it's, it's, you know, it Draining drains him. Because he's you know? getting life from his yeah. kid and have to come back and yeah. live this life. Exactly. Me, yeah. on the other hand- this was all voluntary. You know, I had a place set up. I was supposed to crash at a, at a person's place. He fucking, can I curse on here? Yeah, you okay. can curse. <laughs> he he fizzed it out on me. Like, uh, you know, the, the plane's leaving on Saturday. He texts me Friday evening saying, hey, I got to go back home to like take care of my, uh, my sister who's in the hospital. I'm like, okay, did you leave a key under the mat or anything like that? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot. So you, you remember to text me about leaving for Virginia, but you forgot to leave. Okay. All right. I kind of was already mentally prepared for anything. So when I got there, you know, I slept in the uh, subway station the first night and then I, you know, ended up at Skid Row and started. Anyway, I say all that to say like Vito's experience of being homeless is one of, you know, draining and anxiety and stress. And my experience was like, all right, the beginning, this is like a, a, the beginning of a bright future, you know? That's crazy. Yeah. So you were out here and you were just sleeping in bus stations for uh, four months. Yeah, and the first the first night was a, a subway station, like the red line. I, I still remember that Hollywood and wow. Hollywood and Highland. Uh, and then the next <sighs> night, uh, I was the, the same guy who went back to Virginia to take care of his sister. He told me to go to you know some federal or state government building and tell them that you're homeless and that you've been there for six months because they take um, priority over the people that have been homeless longer. So then they set me up at a shelter in Skid Row. And then through that, I was able to work that system for four months. Yeah. Wow. Which was really cool. I mean, a lot of people, they, they talk badly about experiences like that. But if you have an optimistic mindset, which is one that I do, they fed you three times a day. <laughs> Come on. You, yeah, you're sleeping in like a big ass warehouse with like 70 dudes. And a lot of them are drug addicts and mean. And like, you know, they just don't really have a future for themselves. But if you're looking at it from the perspective of like, I'm a storyteller, I'm a writer, I'm a filmmaker. So this is like my story and like, this is how my story starts. So of course I'm excited and they're feeding me. They got fucking sandwiches and spaghetti. <laughs> this is just a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hard boiled eggs. Wow. I got into oatmeal at that shelter. I didn't like oatmeal until I started living there. He didn't have no choice. <laughs> yeah. He didn't yeah. eat whatever yeah. he was giving. Yeah. Exactly. Now, now you eat oatmeal. Exactly. But for, with <laughs> for choice. <laughs> <'Cause> you... <laughs> exactly. So. so what motivated you? What, what was the reason you decided to move out here with not knowing anyone and not really having, uh, I guess, a, a plan, really? Well, um, at the end of the day, I I want to be at the top of the Hollywood fitness entertainment industry. Like, I want to merge all of my passions into one. And I want to do that through the power of story and uh, storytelling. So that was my motivation to come out to Los Angeles because this is the mecca for storytelling in this format, in the format of filmmaking. And I always knew I was going to come out here. And I'm so happy that I got to meet Valley Muscle because it's always been difficult for me to meet people. Yeah, I can make friends, but it's always been difficult for me to meet a friend who has the same level of ambition and is willing to put in the work to actually make something truly magnificent occur in real life. Most people, it's like, oh yeah, that's so cool what you're doing, Sean, but I don't really have that in me. And fucking Valley. Valley. <laughs> okay, so let's get into that. Yeah. When did you guys meet? I met um, I met Valley like eight months ago now. Shit, it was like November. So that's not even not that long yeah, ago. Yeah, like we've last, made a lot of progress. Year, November. Yeah, yeah. And I found him on Instagram. Um, I was following some dude that I met at the bar that I was working at, and Valley popped up in this dude's Instagram story. Man, was, we, we would shout Trevor out because <laughs> yeah, no. if it wasn't for Trevor, bro, yeah. we wouldn't even be friends. Yeah, though. Shout out my one. boy Trevor. Yeah, He's a yeah. part of a... Uh, Larry Wills and the PR PR team over there, mm -hmm. man, at one gym. Yeah, yeah. So whenever I see Trevor, I always think of like, he he started everything, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I saw Valley on Trevor's uh, story. Valley was shirtless. I was like, all right, that guy, <laughs> I'm hitting that guy up. So, it, was it first at lo uh, love at first sight? <laughs> <laughs> was it one of those things? <laughs> I mean, no ditty, but like, yeah, kind of. Yeah, no. Hey, we, we, can, we can have nah, bromance, yeah, right? Sure. A little Definitely. bromance. Yeah. I would say that's pretty accurate. Yeah. I, I saw him immediately and I was like, I reached out to him. And honestly, like we we actually, um, the first time I ever sp spoke to him was, uh, it was an Instagram live interview. And I watched it recently, like a couple weeks ago. 
And just like, you can see the friendship occur within like minutes. <laughs> like, and it's like, it's a genuine in real time, two people meeting each other for the first time. And I noticed that that dynamic that's captured in that Instagram live interview has not changed in the past eight months. Like the way that we were together, like that's how it's always that's it. been. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I know. Yeah. So what, what were you doing at that point? Eight months ago, I was doing what I've been doing now, man. I've just been working out, busting my ass, trying to make a name for myself in this fitness industry. Um, I know when I, I set out this industry in February 2020, man, I told myself that I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted to be the face of something. I wanted to, didn't matter. I just wanted to be, I know it had to be anything with fitness, but I wanted my name at the time was Where's Your Fitness? I was using my last name in a fitness mantra in a sense to... Uh, brand myself but you know a little along the line I kind of like consider you know using a different name because my name is Dope Deontay Ware but I didn't want people to be calling me that in the gym so I had to come up with something and shout out my boy Jizzle he ended up giving me the name Valley Muscle and ever since that day I ended up running with it and it just like kind of helped with um, who I've been trying to promote in a sense uh, <laughs> People don't even call me Valley Muscle. They've dropped the muscle and just call me Valley now. Yeah. So it's like, I don't even have to ask people to do that. And it's like, everything's just been playing, playing along, man. Like I said, since we've met, um, I've, uh, I've propelled actually uh, in different lanes because uh, the bodybuilding avenue, that was something new for me in a sense. Like I've been, been told for people over the last couple of years that I should have been, you should be doing bodybuilding. You have a great physique. You got this or anything. And I like kind of shrugged it off a few times because it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't necessarily something that I was like intrigued of, you know what I'm saying? But when I met him and the message that he came to me with, and it's like, I was just telling somebody the other day, like, it was like, it, when he came to me, it was like, we were going to be the faces of something, which I thought was cool, but not only the face of something, but it's like how Michael Jordan came to a league that was already a league, but he became the face of that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So there's already a league. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, all these guys, they're already the face of that. I'm not trying to be the face of something that already has a face. <laughs> Natural body, but it doesn't have a face. There's nobody. So when that's I, true. So yeah. when he hit that, and I was like, bling, light bulbs in my head, poof. Oh, that's how I'm going to make my name. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I'm going to so, do it. So you guys have been into fitness for a while now. Yeah. But when did you guys want to take this serious and pretty much take it to the next level? Shit, not even like that, bro. I've been taking this shit serious since that day that I stepped into that gym because I knew it, how much it meant to my mental. I haven't been doing this shit for nobody but me. So I, I haven't took the, the, like the level of trying to do this because I want to look good. I didn't really give a fuck if I looked good like because I knew what came with being in the gym. Obviously, you're going to look good, but this... <laughs> You can't train your mind. The body follows what the mind does. So, you know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people get in the gym and they end up phasing out because they're allowing their mind to control what they want to do. Yeah. And for <laughs> me, I uh, I started taking it seriously. Uh, so I've always identified with having a really nice physique. And up until, I don't know, age 28, I didn't really have to do much so far as nutrition is concerned in order to like see the type of physique that I wanted to see in the mirror. I would just go to the gym work out, take my shirt off. Ha ha, I look dope, right? COVID happened, all the gyms shut down and I gained like 40 pounds of fat in that first year of the, of the pandemic. And I still couldn't work out, but now I got to do something. And my friend put me on to calorie tracking and eating in a deficit. And the first four months of 2021, I was able to basically lose 30 pounds of fat and I wasn't working out. So it was just eating correctly. I lost 30 pounds of fat and I looked amazing. So then this is when like the thought happened. Okay, so I, I got this physique just from eating. What if I did eating and working out at the same time, I could have one of the greatest physiques out there. And that's honestly, that was three years ago. Let's let's go for it. Let's go for like the best physique <laughs> walking around. And that's how we got here. <laughs> wow, that, that's an incredible story. Yeah. And you guys want to be the face of natural bodybuilding, right? right? That's like, it seems that's one of your guys' goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that already say, I mean, everybody's, there's a lot of people that say that they're natural, they're the kings of this, king of that. Mm -hmm. But if the people aren't saying it, then you're not really the king of anything. Yeah. If the people, you can't, like I just said, people took the valley muscle and t started calling me valley. I didn't ask for that. They did it on their own. So you have to let, well, you just have to let the work that you're doing and let the people speak for you. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. How do you make people believe that you guys are, are natural though? Just by being genuine, honestly. I mean, to me, that's like the, the best solution. Cause obviously you can do the blood test and the urine test. And like, we will get into that at a later date, but 
my whole goal with the content and the promotion of what we're doing is to come off as genuine, honest, and truthful as we possibly can. And then when we say that we're natural bodybuilders, the majority of the people, that's my intention, is like, hey, listen, these guys are authentic dudes. And if they're saying that they're natural, who are we to say otherwise? As opposed to there, there are already people in that world, like Michael Hearn is like a top example. Nobody wants to believe that Michael Hearn is natural. I don't even want to believe that Michael Hearn is natural. And that's why that our message is so important because we're starting from the beginning. This is the beginning of our careers. We're already saying, hey, we're natural. And by the time that we're done, our story has never changed. So like, that's kind of- Can you repeat that question one more time? Yeah, well, uh, it was, uh, man, I, I forgot. I was just so into your story. <laughs> no, definitely but how do, you, how, do you, how do you make people yeah. believe that you're natural? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like goes to like a conversation we were having in, in uh, the gym earlier today. Um, I don't feel like I'm necessarily trying to make people believe anything because people are going to believe what they want to at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, all I can do is continue to be me and authentic. So the people that watch me and believe that I am natural, <laughs> thank you. The people that don't, Thank you. Like you're still doing me a, a service because you not thinking that I'm natural. That only helps my image because I know what I am at the deep down. I don't have to explain who I am to no one. I know who I am. And if you do fuck with me again, thanks. If you don't, thanks. But like I'm, I'm just all I want to do in this fitness industry is be true to myself and the people around me. And the only the, the only way and the easiest way for me to do that is to continue being me. I don't feel like going as far as having to tell somebody that I'm natural or not or blah, 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 blah. Shit, if I have to tell you, that means you're going to question it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let me just continue doing what I'm doing and I'm going I'm to do what I'm doing with the work that I'm putting through these videos and how I speak and how I walk. And you can choose to believe what you want to believe because at the end of the day, I can say, oh, I'm natural. You're going to believe me or not. <laughs> just yeah. like he just said, I don't want to even believe Michael Hearn and he's telling the world he is. He's a lifetime natural. Shit, they're going to believe what they want. So I'm not into the, the, the lifestyle of, hey, you want to believe? I Do what you want because I'm going to keep doing me. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I I accept the fact that we're not going to hit everyone, you know, over the course of our career. If we can make as much of an impact as we can, it's never going to be 100%. Mm -hmm. But we will change the lives of a percentage of the population. The people that come across our page and they get to absorb our content that's definitely the plan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what do you think of the guys out there that are on gear, that are taking stuff? W what are your thoughts on that? I'll let Valley take Man, this. Man, shout out to my boy, Eric. <laughs> Eric Shout Shanaki. out to my fucking coach, Theron, yep. uh, Melvin, Gilbert. Shit, I can keep going. Niall. Mm -hmm. uh, I can keep going. Shout out to all my, all my friends, and I'm shouting them out because these dudes, they are what... <laughs> You would want to see if a person is doing, you know, steroids or anything like that, they're putting the work ethic behind it. So that's why I shouted these people out. But I don't I don't like try to categorize who's better or who's like who's not, because, again, I have friends that are pushing their ass and busting their ass to, you know, make themselves become what they are. Um, and on our journey, in a sense, all we're trying to do is just trying to. Show that it can yeah, be Yeah, like that's all we're trying to do. Yeah. We're just like, like yin and yang. Like yeah. it's black and white. Yeah. You can choose this lane or you can choose this one. There's mm -hmm. a red pill and a blue pill. It's mm -hmm. just what you choose to do. Like those guys still have to work as, as hard as us. We probably have to work a little bit harder only because like when we come down on cuts, we don't retain as much muscle. So I understand why certain people do that. But what we're trying to do is just show that you can still get those kind of results. You just have to work a little harder and maybe a little, a little longer. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And we're also coming from a longevity standpoint. So it's quite, you know, known that steroids do endanger your life, especially depending on how much you take and things of that nature. So with the way that society is going in so far as the prior the prioritization of health and wellness, mm -hmm. we are just looking to fill that avenue of <laughs> like, okay, if you're going to start prioritizing health and wellness, here are two athletes that also do the same. And look how amazing they, they are. I mean, you can actually achieve really great results while staying natural. And like that's, I don't want to demonize the people that take steroids in, in, Cause instead. Because that's, that's not our message. Yeah, that's it's not, not our message at all. And in fact, I will, you know, acknowledge the fact that when it comes to sometimes my content, I, I don't word my captions sometimes. He doesn't mean that shit. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can come off like I'm attacking uh, the community that takes steroids. And that's never my intention. 
Um, but it is a difficult balance to walk because if I'm if I'm targeting anyone, it's the people that are conditioned to believe that you have to take steroids in order to achieve a great physique. It's the people that are saying there's no such thing as natural bodybuilding. And if you see a physique that looks great, then they're probably on gear. That's who, that's the villain. Not the person that says it, but the belief behind that that person. That's who I'm fighting against. But see, this goes back to what we we always have conversation, but that's why I try to get him to understand. We just got to continue doing our work. Mm-hmm. You can't focus on the people that are saying this or saying that because there's going to be in everybody, you know, how to, no matter how many steps we take to get where we're going, there's always going to be yeah. a person on every fucking step saying that we ain't this, we not yeah. doing this right, we're not. So if you worried about every one of those steps, we ain't going to be able to get through our journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I get I get how frustrating that shit can be, but I don't, I don't, shit, if I ain't the one telling you you ain't natural. <laughs> Then don't worry about it. it, it, yeah. it what, why is that shit rubbing you the wrong way? Because shit, that, that's an opinion. An opinion is like assholes. Everybody has one. That's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> but when it comes to competition, you mentioned that you can achieve the same kind of physique mm-hmm. as someone that's doing gear. I don't agree with that because when it comes to competition, right? Mm-hmm. You're on stage. Someone that's on stuff. Mm-hmm. Is probably going to look a little bit better than someone that's not. not. Well, is that depends, true or not? It depends on the criteria. Like, what's the metric? So, for instance, we we just competed in our first show um, two Saturdays ago. Uh, I came in second overall against a gentleman who the judges and you know you can see it in the pictures. He had a superior chest. Do I think he that did. his physique is better than mine, even though he's taking enhancements? I don't personally think so. But again, I'm using a different metric. And honestly, I I brought. The photos to like you know Ryan Benson coach um, and he who, even said he yeah did. who coaches Larry Wheels um, he even said the same thing your physique is superior but they're looking at a criteria and on that criteria this person had a better chest so ultimately I don't think that people who take steroids have superior physique and he didn't display his chest the proper way yeah and it was a posing adjustment up yeah in some his poses that's just, that's why I took a second in the overall in the open body but it was like I say it to say this. <laughs> Out of that whole show, again, there he was, was the made, most shredded was out of the, out of, out of everyone the there. entire show. Yeah, I don't care. Are you guys shredded now? Not right now. <laughs> no, no? <laughs> not, not like that. Let's, 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 let's. <laughs> hey, you guys are pretty shredded, yeah. bro. What are you guys talking I mean, about? You know, Dude. not like I was. Though, to the untrained I was crazy, eye, we look great. But you guys look amazing. So I, literally, you. the entire show, I was the most peeled person yeah. there. I didn't. I don't feel like I necessarily lost. And shout out to my boy Jake. He did his. He did his shit. He beat me in my opinion in his posing. Like I had the most peeled. Anybody can say I had the most yeah. peeled body. Yeah. Everybody there could have said that. Yeah. But he definitely had more, a little bit more size. And he does tell me that he's, you know, he takes PDs. He has a little bit more size. But that's not why he beat me in our in our uh, in our mandatories in our um, side by sides. He did some posings better than me. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the posings, I'm more crunched down, looking like, looking the way I'm not supposed to in a sense. Instead of standing tall, looking like an, a bodybuilder in a sense. But And to take it a step further, so I'm sure you're familiar with the golden era so far as Arnold Schwarzenegger pumping iron and that mm-hmm. whole piece of that movement. All right. So after the golden era, they bodybuilding the community itself went in a certain direction where they started prioritizing mass over everything. I feel that's, and again, this is just my humble opinion. Mm-hmm. I feel that's kind of where bodybuilding took, took a, a left. Took a take yeah, took a left that's turn. That's all people want to see is these yeah. big block ass yeah. people. So it went from the, the beauty and the aesthetic of the golden era where they did prioritize size, but they also pr- prioritized shape. Because what happened to the grace? Yes, what happened yes. To the, yeah, they prioritize size, shape, like that? and with conditioning. That, with that, that yeah. Yeah. bulky, you're, you're not... You, People don't even look at you like graceful. Right. And the person who started that was uh, Dorian Yates. He yep. was a six-time monster. Mr. Olympia champion. <laughs> and he really started the whole mass monster movement. After Dorian Yates, it was Ronnie Coleman. And then there was no looking back. No looking back. If these champions are being crowned like the top bodybuilder in the world, now every single bodybuilder who wants to get to that, that same level, they don't have a choice but to aim for mass. And the only way to get there is steroids. Exactly. And that's... Thank you for bringing it full circle. So yeah, bodybuilding went in the in a in a wrong direction. Again, this is just my personal opinion, and we are here to correct that. We're here to correct that it. and show like, okay, let's start prioritizing aesthetics again. Let's start thinking about conditioning and shape and proportion as opposed to only thinking about how big can you get. 
Yeah. So obviously this takes a lot of work, a lot of time, but also you guys need help, right? Do you guys have a coach yeah. that helps you? We have three coaches. Three coaches. Shout out our team, man, yeah, uh, DMF, DMF yeah. uh, and our dope-ass sponsor, man, White Rabbit, man. The uh, team over there is taking care of us like a, like a stepchild. <laughs> so, uh, a, lo a love stepchild. Uh, like, not, like definitely like a love. Not like, I didn't say it like that. I'm yeah. talking about like the stepchild that came in and, you know, mom and the, the, the dad is hitting it off and she didn't want to make sure that they see the son got everything that they need. Yeah, they, they, they definitely yeah. taking care of yeah. us. But uh, yeah, shout out, great. you know, DMF, Coach Theron, uh, Endo, Mel, Gilbert, and uh, everybody that, that's over there at the DMF gym, yeah. man. We uh, we love y'all. Um, can say without that team, um, I don't, me personally, I don't know how he feels, but I don't think we would have been as, as prepared and ready for that show like we were. Uh, we, we went into this show... <laughs> We went into the show, when I met him, we were already planning on doing this show in January. So when January hit, we hit the ground running on trying to prep like for working out and meals and shit like that. And it was just me and him playing off of each other's mind. Like, what should I eat? What should I do this? Like, mm -hmm. so it was like, we didn't have a coach. And then January came around and the fitness expo hit. I'm sponsored by White Rabbit. They called me out, asked me if I wanted to come out. I'm like, hell yeah. So I'm like, you guys are actually a ticket, extra ticket for my boy, Sean? He's like, we sure do or whatever, you know, you guys come out, blah, blah, blah. So when we got there, uh, my coach Darren and his wife were, um, were there and they work with White Rabbit because they have a gym. So they, you know, do a lot of ordering and stuff like that on the back end. And one thing led to another. We was there for that whole day and one little small conversation, he ended up asking like, man, what y'all do, man? Like grabbed on our stomach. We like, what y'all do? I'm like, should we bodybuild? He's like, nah, man, no way. I'm like, hell yeah. He's like, man, I'm actually a coach. And then like the conversation just went from there and we told him what the show we were trying to do. He's like, bro, I'm supposed to be at that show. We actually sponsored that show. Like, what the hell? So it was like, shit just started to fall into place yeah. for us, bro. Like, it, it wasn't like we were forcing motherfuckers to help us or do anything. Like, shit just started to fall into line. Like, and that's how I knew, like, okay, we're in, we're with the right team for one. Yep. And they just, they also pour into us, man. When we go to this out there to Indio, California, um, I know our first time there. <laughs> <laughs> Two, it's a two hour and 30 minute trip. Man, yeah. and, and it's, it's hell. So yeah. our first time there, I think we did a, we were doing a round trip because we didn't have no, we didn't know nobody, yeah. we, know, we had nowhere to stay. So our first time out there, I'm telling Ugh, this dude, I like, remember it. you need to get your ass, like, get, get this <laughs> shit together. Because I, I come from, like, I know he he comes, like, not like our backgrounds are hella different because he is black, They are different. They are different. he comes from older parents that, like, in a sense, yeah. they were p political and stuff like that. Yeah. His dad was a politician. So he came from a different background. My background is hard-ass loving and shit like that. So, like, get get your, get, get this shit in gear because yeah. I didn't seen, I didn't seen some of the worst shit in life. So it's like, this ain't as bad as what I didn't saw. Mm -hmm. So this workout that you complaining over, get your ass in gear and let's go, bro, because right now we're on a trial run. They don't fucking know us. And this is how they're going to assess if they want to work yeah. with us or not. Yeah, and, and I was fucking right. Yeah, we, we. I was fucking right. <laughs> and I and I made them get his shit together. So we mm -hmm. we it was like over the course of a month, this whole team mm -hmm. was like really like every yeah. time we went out there, they were just it was beating our asses, but they were doing it to see how far they can take us. And yeah. I and I'm glad they did because I'm not a person that you can break. Yeah, I'm not. You know that, what I'm saying? That that first month of working with our coaches, for me, it was a transformative mentally because. Um, we, we have the footage of the first day. You could see fear in my eyes within like the first two sets because I'm not, I'm not used to being pushed by other people. I've always like, I've always been a solo person. And in fact, immersing myself with the team, Valley Muscle being my training partner and everything, it's like, that has all been an adjustment for me because I've always done things on my own. It's been all, I already said it, like it's been difficult for me to find people to work with because like I am very ambitious. A lot of people can't meet me there. Yeah. So it's like working with that team. And, and like I, when I look at the footage, like it's still there. It's like, like you can just see like, oh it's crazy, dude. <laughs> Cause I could see like even like every times we're like like even today we were we were killing ourselves in the leg. Yeah, right? yeah. But I told him I said, bro, it's gonna be like this for it's gonna be like this for a couple of times because I'm telling him like my legs are the strongest part of my body and I haven't been training like that over the last year since I've known him. I haven't. I just like been coasting through this these little bullshit workouts. But I told him I said, bro, I'm about to be getting a little bit deeper into this shit. I said, so I need you to tap back into that mental. Mm -hmm. And I told him he's like, bro, I don't and, know what and you're I'm talking there. About. I'm and there. He is. Yeah. He definitely is. Yeah. But he, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Yeah. Cause I'm like, look, I can see this shit in your eyes. <laughs> I can see this shit in your eyes. But bro. it doesn't look like a like it did. It doesn't look like no, it did. No, it definitely don't look like yeah, it. Yeah. But he was 
Go ahead. So you guys uh, you competed. You just competed. Yeah. And that yeah. was your first competition. First mm-hmm. competition. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so how has that, obviously competing for like a show, it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy sure. and mental strength as well. Yeah. How has that in meeting the team you guys have now, how has that changed your life from when you started training with them yeah. till now? Yeah. Okay. How, is, how has the whole thing changed my life? Um, it has given me a purpose and a lot more structure in my daily routine. And also like uh, there's a through line. So before making the decision to compete and actually falling into the team, I had an intention. I had an idea as to like where I wanted to get to from point A to point B. As things assembled and we started pre- uh, prepping for this show, the the intention turned into a vision and it became a very well-structured plan to get from point A to point B. And that's what I'm most grateful for so far as the show and so far as the team that helped coach us to get there. Um, and now it's just like, we're off to the races. First show's done. We have another show coming up in November and we just keep going until we actually cement ourselves as the faces of natural bodybuilding. And that is going to take probably two to three years to actually really hit the level that we're looking for. Yeah. What about you? What do you think? As, how has your life changed since you started training and taking this like serious to the point where you're competing? Yeah. Oh uh, man, honestly, bro, like I can get emotional talking about this because honestly, uh, I don't know. It's just like I was saying something to somebody earlier. Um, Without this team, I don't really, like, I feel like people go their whole lives, like, literally trying to find their purpose, trying to find what they're supposed to do or what they, or what it's, what's out here in the world for them. I've been searching for 32 years, bro. And I feel like, feel like I finally found it. You feel like this is... Like, I don't, I don't know how far or where this shit's going to take me, but the feeling that that stage gave me... <laughs> I know for a fact that I finally found, like, I've, I've played sports my whole life. I've played in college. I've done all of that. The feeling that that stage gave me is the feeling that I've never had in doing anything in my life, bro. So it's like, you ask how that changed my life. Shit, it's, it's made my life. <laughs> um, I felt like before doing this, the biggest thing I had going for myself was being a high school football coach. And... um. I love that shit, but now it's like the f- the shit that I was promoting to the kids before me being a bodybuilder. Now was like I was still on the same route, trying to promote fitness, trying to promote health, and trying to you know promote anything good with fitness. But now it's like I'm not just this fitness enthusiast that these kids can like. Oh, coach is doing this dope shit online. Or it's like now my purpose behind my life it shows them a bigger meaning in a sense. Like I don't know how to explain it, but it's like. I'm not just like the regular person on on Instagram doing fitness content anymore. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it started for me, which was cool. And I'm not knocking anybody doing it, but like that wasn't, that didn't fulfill me. Now I've actually found something that like fulfills me. Like he said, the structure, I've always been structured in anything that I've done in my life. So getting into this bodybuilding full fledged, like it has literally changed my life for the better. Like, honestly. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. So what's some advice you guys would give to someone that's just starting their fitness journey that doesn't have a coach, doesn't really have any structure, mm-hmm. anything like that, but wants to get into shape and, and find like a better diet? Okay. Uh, wants to get in shape and find a better diet. I am a huge advocate of starting off small. Uh, so you want to make small changes that can accumulate over time into mm-hmm. uh, bigger life-changing habits. Uh, so if we're talking about diet... Diet's a big one. First off, you want to start making like uh, you want to start tracking what you're eating on a daily basis. And I wouldn't even change the contents of what you're eating first. I would go a full week of just keeping a list. And then after that week, if let's say your goal is to lose weight, have you lost weight in that week? No. Okay. So let's see what we can remove on a daily basis or on a weekly basis that would help you lose weight. And we, we start there, it's incremental changes. And then when it comes to uh, exercise or, or getting in shape, just prioritize going to the gym. And again, we're, we're looking at the base level. If what you wanna do is to change your body through nutrition and exercise, small changes. Go to the gym three, three times a week. We're not talking five, we're talking three times a week, get yourself to the gym. I don't know what to do at the gym. All right, well, treadmill. Let's get on the treadmill. 
we start that activity of now you're moving. <laughs> now you're moving, okay? And then when it comes to resistance training, that's when we have to start getting a bit more specific as to like what your actual goals are. Putting on mass, okay, let's go through a full body workout where you hit every single muscle group three times a week. And that would be... So you don't want to have someone jump into the deep end no. right off the bat because that doesn't sound sustainable. The, the primary goal when it comes to um, health and wellness and self-improvement so far as fitness and uh, that stuff is concerned, longevity and adherence. You want to create habits that a person can stick with for the rest of their lives as opposed to something quick and fixed like uh, Ozempic <laughs> or like, you know, the shortcuts. And again, like not to, not to rag on steroids because the people that are in our community, people are taking steroids with the intention of competing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's an entirely different thing. Exactly. Other people that are taking steroids with the intention of like looking good, you're looking for a shortcut. Let's just be honest. Instead, let's focus on what you can do on a daily basis to improve yourself in a healthy way, as opposed to looking for something to like look good and it didn't really fulfill you on the inside. What about supplements? What kind of supplements should people even take supplements if they're just getting into fitness and, and wealth and health? I wouldn't say so because you're, again, you're looking for like some kind of hack. There is no hack. It's just routine. It's just consistency. If, if there's any supplement, if you want to like- Creatine yeah. or pre-workout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and creatine is clinically proven to be like the most effective supplement out there. So that's why I will recommend creatine. But again, we're talking about like percentages, like single digit percentages so far as like the effect that it will have on your body. Steroids will, will have a significant effect on your body. But again, that's- not healthy, <laughs> depending on, on how you use it. And what is your real goal? Is your real goal to like not have a physique and then tomorrow you have a physique? Is that really your goal? If so, why? Where's that coming from? As opposed to creating habits that sustain you over the course of a lifetime. Yeah, so I used to be super into fitness uh, a few years ago, like super dialed in, counting macros. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was like focused. I learned everything. I watched all the videos, yeah. all the fitness influencers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Christian Guzman, like uh, all no, these yeah, people, yeah, you know, yeah. like I, I, it was, it was insane yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah. Awfully. Yeah. Uh, I was just super like into the whole fitness. I would go to the fitness expos. I was into it for maybe like two, three years, okay. super dialed in, but I kind of felt like I burned myself out just like dieting so hard and just mm -hmm. kind of going into that whole world and immersing myself. And I felt like I burned myself out. What kind of advice would you give someone like me who kind of went all in into that world mm -hmm. and burned themselves out? And now it's not really like, like, I just don't feel I'm like that. I don't want to do that again right. to get to that level. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, at that point, I feel like reaching out to a coach maybe only because I feel like I've, now, I've always been opposed to even working with people or trying to get help in the gym, but it's like being a part of a team now, being a part of a coach that actually like wants to see results or wants to see me succeed, it only helps you hold yourself accountable. You know what I'm saying? You can work with a guy who maybe holds you accountable for maybe two, three months. And then that accountability, like he was just saying earlier, those small increments of somebody holding you accountable, if you might be able to work that into your own self and be able to hold yourself accountable instead of somebody else doing it for you. But it's just... Honestly, finding a why, if it's not finding a coach, finding a why, why, what, why am I, why do I even want to go work out? Why do I, what am I doing this for? Yeah. Once you figure out why you're trying to do that, it makes it easier to, when you have those thoughts of not wanting to do it, oh, shit, why? Oh yeah. Okay. Let's go, go. Cause I, I, I remember that. Why I gotta go. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm still into fitness and I still go to the gym. <laughs> mm -hmm. Diet, I can do a little bit better mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just one of those things where I felt like I did it for so for so long. And I just mm -hmm. burned myself out. And I know how, how much work it takes <laughs> to even like lean out, and, you sure. know, and I, 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 my genetics aren't like crazy right. either. So mm -hmm. how much do genetics also take into place yeah. to looking maybe like you guys? Yeah, huge, huge factor. Um, <laughs> That's why I let him answer that. <laughs> All right, so I, I wanna say two things. Um, first answer, uh, your the previous question, what Valley said about finding your why is incredibly important. And I also like to use a different strategy, which is I like to make the whole process as chill as possible, because I think a lot of people are pushing the message like, oh, I got this body through hard work. And that can turn off 
a lot of the general population because you know they're looking at themselves with their little uh, that's muffin hard, top. That's hard work. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. And it's like, okay, I'll, I'll watch the content, but I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, like, if there's anything I can do so far as encouraging people to like, again, I always talk about starting off small, like you know, keep it simple and moderation. Okay, so if your goal is to make improvements to your physique. Again, you want to you want to figure out what you can do on a weekly basis that doesn't feel extraneous, mm-hmm. you know, or it's or keep it fun. Yeah, keep it fun. Well, work out with whenever a, you're doing yeah. something fun, you want to do it yeah, every day. Exactly. Have a friend, have a workout partner, you know, and like, oh, I'm looking forward to working out with my with my friend at two o'clock every Monday, Thursday and Saturday, you know, and like that would be one introduction. And then uh, the second thing that you said about what was the last thing that you just said? Uh, oh, I, um, genetics. Genetics, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How important is that? So, all right, uh, shout out key. Tristan Lee on, on this one I because because I was I was really struggling with like, all right, this is year one of our bodybuilding career and <laughs> our physiques look pretty good. Yeah, and we've been training for this moment. <laughs> oh, and shit. All, all around, it's probably going to be like an eight-year estimate so far as our body. It occurs. might be longer now that we stepped off stage because yeah. we've seen this spotlight. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think me and Valley both arrived at the at the decision where it's like, if we start seeing that our bodies aren't getting better after the most recent show, that will probably be the time where we, we were ready to hang it up. So if that's eight years from now, maybe it's 10 years, maybe it's 15, but we want to see improvements every time we get on stage. And, you know, after that, it might be guest posing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, my encouragement is to focus on your own genetic potential. And every single person in the world, they have their best. They have the best versions of themselves. And I encourage people to chase after that version. You can use me or you can use Valley as a as a as a role model. Look at these guys, they look so great. I wanna look just like these guys, but you also wanna keep it realistic. What's the best that you can look? Take a look at, at take stock in what you have going on and see what improvements you can make for yourself. Yeah, great. That's uh, that's a uh, uh, great advice. I want to pivot into social media. Sure. Yeah. Uh, how important is having a big social media following within the f- health and fitness industry? Mm. Not important at all. Not. No. You don't. You guys don't think that having more followers, more engagement, that's all smoke, that gets you more opportunities within this world? Um, for the purpose of what we're doing, which is to promote a movement. Uh, the movement of natural bodybuilding. Yeah, it's very important. We have a very, it's very intentional. So everything that we've done so far is our following and the content that we make, it's geared toward the purpose of promoting natural bodybuilding and getting it to the same level of people that take uh, steroids. So if Chris Bumstead is a top bodybuilder in the world, I want a natural equivalent to Chris Bumstead to exist. So that by the time that me and Valley are ready to retire, now we've created a lane for other athletes. Yeah, other athletes like, okay, well, I don't have to take steroids to, to compete against Chris Bumstead. I can just stay natural and still experience glory. We're trying to make an, uh, <laughs> there's a Mount, a Mount Rushmore yeah. of bodybuilders yeah. on that side. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, we Ronnie Coleman. one on this side too. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be the- But are, are these competitions, are do, does we everyone will, do we, steroids? We, is, there, is there natural so bodybuilding yes, competitions? There is, yeah. natural, there is, but there's like- but it's, do people still no, no, take stuff? No, no, you can't because on those natu- those naturals, they're fed, they're they're tested for sure. Okay, but in the federation that we in, NPC, IFBB. NPC, we definitely we're definitely facing people that are not uh, definitely natural. Some of them are enhanced, but they're also taking a liking to doing a lot of more natural bodybuilding they're competitions starting to prioritize it. this year alone. Yeah, but the thing about that is, like I told him, it's cool if we get on stage with other natural bodybuilders, but I already feel like. Not no knocking anybody, but it's just my mental. I'm superior to all those guys in a sense. So it's like we don't bring a spotlight to that <laughs> to them by beating them. Yeah, <laughs> we bring a spotlight by beating people that we're trying to say that we are comparable to. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well said. <laughs> okay. Well said. Uh, so going back to social media, mm-hmm. uh, how important is that for you guys? Like, how much of uh, how much focus do you guys put towards that and like putting out good content and yeah. promoting yourselves the way you guys. Building your, your guys' yeah. narrative, basically. Yeah. To me, it's kind of like a metric. So, for instance, I, I already referenced Chris Bumstead, who is, in a lot of people's eyes, the, the best bodybuilder currently active. He's got 20 million followers. So when I say it's a metric, if Chris Bumstead, as a 
steroid taking bodybuilder has 20 million. I want a natural bodybuilder with 20 million. That's kind of how I look at it. And I keep it that simple. So throughout my career, I'm asking myself, what do we need to do in order to generate that level of buzz where we have 20 million followers? And I just keep it that simple. Otherwise it's like, I'm not like, it doesn't get me excited. Oh, look at me. I got, you know, right now I have 60,000. What, what do we have to do to get to 600? What do we have to do to get to, to 6 million? Like, that's the only question I'm asking myself. I mean, the followers mean a lot in a sense, because I get what you're, where you might be going with, with that question. The followers mean a lot if you're trying to like grow in, grow with brands. Yeah. 100 percent that's that's the only way yeah. it means anything yeah. like as far as like does a person, it add inches like a person that's worried about all of that shit in the beginning yeah you're focused on the wrong things yeah and i think that's where he was getting yeah. at. like you're just if that's all you're worried about the followers and this and that you're focused on the wrong things yeah. because what's your message exactly yeah <laughs> what, whatever you have coming to you is going to come to you yeah. you just had to let that shit genuinely come to you yeah. but do you guys think having like a bigger following right will get you bigger sponsors bigger, bigger brands yeah 100 percent. i definitely do yeah i mean if you if you like all right when i first met valley i had a thousand followers all right and nobody i mean valley alone just the fact that he decided to even entertain me uh, i sent him a dm and he could have just just said no, like uh, the tens of other people that I reached out to in the span of that first year uh, back in 2023. I reached out to plenty of fitness influencers and it was very rare that a person got back to me. Valley got back to me within literally minutes, literally minutes. I re I sent him a DM and he got back to me within minutes. And it was okay? my hitting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it was like, it was always meant to be. So to say, um, yeah, the bigger you're following, the more opportunities come to you so far as like anything fitness industry, because, you know, people are looking to capitalize off of your following. That's, that's definitely accurate. So, so right now, do you guys have a sponsors? Yeah. Do you guys want to plug them real quick? Uh, White shit, Rabbit. We both, both sponsored by White Rabbit. Shout out to White Rabbit. Um, What's call, White Rabbit? Tell us a little bit about drink. that. The best energy okay. drink on yeah. the world. <laughs> yeah. You guys should have brought some. Oh, uh, damn. I just got done finishing my drink. <laughs> Not oh. even gonna lie, I should have brought one. But uh, okay, so it's an energy drink. It's an yeah. energy drink. It's actually, and they sponsor you. Let's talk about how that works and how does someone even get a sponsor. Mm. To be honest with you, man. I this is so genuine. Uh, this was kind of like because of Larry. Larry had a. He's part of the White Rabbit. They have a a, a flavor based off of him, um, and he ended up inviting me to the White Rabbit launch party. And from there is like, you know, obviously is I'm in a room full of other influencers and stuff like that. I was I had a chance to uh end up meeting the owners and stuff like that. And I just gained a rapport with them. Everybody at the fucking at the place loved me. Um the video guy of the venue that was doing the event, he ended up liking my personality and ended up getting me to walk around and host like the party, like asking people a bunch of questions. So White Rabbit ended up reaching out to me because he had all this footage of me. In their archives, or he, they wanted to know who the fuck this dude. Even though they already met me, but it just made it more intriguing. Like, damn, he didn't. He's there promoting our brand. Like, he's already a part of the brand. We want him. So it was like it just hit. I, I didn't even know him at that time. It was like maybe a month and a half before me and him met. Because mm -hmm. at that time, I would have he would have been at the party with yeah. me. But from there, I ended up getting uh, with them. You also got raw gear. Yeah, raw gear. I got so that's a few of them. I got a uh, white rabbit raw gear. Uh, C4, Cellular Core, Extend. Um, I was sponsored by a brand called TL TLF, but the only, I'm not even going to lie, man, I'll say it on this camera, the only two brands that I'm really like focused on and really care to see them really grow is DMF and White Rabbit. DMF is our coach. DMF is like, yeah. that's that's his that's his brand, yeah. that's his team. I don't care. Like I, I, I fuck with Raw Gear. I'm thankful to be a part of them and stuff like that. But the only two sponsors that do make me feel like they care about me and not just what I do for them and their brand is White Rabbit and DMF. And if if I can piggyback off of that, I would say that Valley's mentality is he's looking to add members to the team as opposed to just looking for like monetary gain. So like there are other brands that exist, like like he said, uh, he is sponsored by Raw Gear or Young LA or, you know, um, what's it, Gymshark, right? Let's say we were to be sponsored by them. If they're not treating us as if like they're invested in our success, then we don't really see them as a as an opportunity because to collaborate. Because where we're going, yeah, I'm already a brand. Yeah, exactly. So when I get where I'm going, you think I'm gonna be wanting to work for another company when yeah. I am a brand? So if you don't see the value in me now, right. 
I already know what my value is. And you and, don't have to. <laughs> yeah, and White Rabbit and Team DMF see the value. They are, I love that perspective. Yeah, they're invested because yeah, you just don't want to be sponsored by yeah. anyone, yeah. right? You, wanna, you also yeah. want to uh, like that brand and yeah, work absolutely. with them yeah. and have that relationship yeah. with them. Uh, what about you? What sponsors do you have? Honestly, um, Valley has done a, a fantastic job with the sponsors. Um, I. I don't even think I'm sponsored by anyone and I'm kind of just associated with Valley. Like every, every sponsorship, like, oh, okay, I'm with the uh, team DMF and we- We definitely are sponsored by them though. Cause yeah. we can't say how we are, but yeah. we are. Yeah, sponsored. 100%. Um, I say all this to say that my personality and, you know, I'm just being completely um, <laughs> I know he's about open to about say, it. Bro. I, I have tunnel vision, okay? <laughs> The only thing I'm focused on is telling the greatest story that I can possibly tell <laughs> within the fitness industry. By the time that's done, I want to segue over over into Hollywood. That's where my interests are. I'm so grateful for Valley because he's got different skills and different abilities that I don't have. So we kind of come together. Valley is able to network. He's able to like walk into an environment, speak to the right people, and then all of a sudden, hey, yo, I got this sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't have that skill, and it's not a skill that I'm even developing. So. To answer your question, Valerie's the guy. But we don't see that's the thing. Like that's what makes this team that yeah. we got so yeah. like so dope because shit, it's like okay, my say my water bottle is half full. He got a bottle that's over there that has enough to pour into my bottle. That's right. enough. Yeah. So it's like when we merged together, mm -hmm. I had what he didn't have, and he had what right. I didn't have. So yeah. it just overlaid on each other, and it was like whatever I was missing is like yeah. Like two different blueprints at the same yeah. house. That sounds yeah. like a great dynamic. Like, yeah, that shit is yeah. Just yeah. Like and even even how we met Coach Coach Theron at mm -hmm. the fitness expo. Like I was even telling him uh, a couple of days ago how grateful I am that Valley spoke to him because now I see him as a brother. You yeah, know, that's like, like that's our dog. Yeah, like he, he's <laughs> we he's our homie. Weeks, like, weeks at our at his yeah. fucking house, like, we, we spending we the night on his couch. You that's know, our boy. And like if, he does. Not to cut yeah. you off, but but he does. Man, him and his fucking wife. Shout out to Brian too, their roommate. Yeah. They they go above and fucking beyond us, to make yeah. us, bro. Like I saw that yeah. our on our peak week, they were so worried about us not having. They don't want us to drive to go do this to get your hair done, do this. Valley, you guys are gonna stay here the whole week. We're gonna get your hair done out here. We're mm -hmm. gonna get your hair cut out here. We're like that's how it, they wanted us to make sure that that we were so good. We didn't have to drive and do all this extra shit. They, I'm like, cause. I, I'm cool. I, I don't want to pay a hundred bucks for a haircut. I got you. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, coach, you've been doing enough. Like, I, I don't want you to. Yeah. Valley, let me take care of this shit. Mm -hmm. That's what he tells me. Yeah. That's like, bro. I so I, I and I definitely like go out of our way. We made sure we did a, like a little something special. Got his wife some roses and some flowers, and uh, we got him like a uh, this little trophy body best, best bodybuilding body, coach. Body yeah. Oh, yep. nice. yeah. So, is there any any brands or companies that, that you guys? would like to get sponsored by oh, or see, we're, we're looking at creating our own brand. You okay. Know? Um, if, if anything, when it really comes down to it, yeah, we got the documentary, but what it really is, is a personal branding project, mm. you know, and to brand ourselves, solidify ourselves as like the faces of natural bodybuilding and then to use that brand to promote other things. And then with that branding comes merch and mm -hmm. all that other mm -hmm. stuff yep. mm -hmm. to monetize it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we're not turning our nose up at, you know, opportunities that are coming at our all. way. Yeah, but we are definitely in a lane and the opportunities are, are coming already. We're just not like, I'll just say it like this. <laughs> Him meeting me, he was definitely like a little naive to a lot of the shit when we first got together. And it's just like, how he wanted sponsors, he wanted this, he was eager to get all of this shit. I think now that he sees like that shit don't mean shit, <laughs> he don't really give a fuck about it because it yeah. don't mean shit. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I was like when I first got into this game, I was oh, I want to get a sponsor. I want to have this. I, had, I started getting sponsors back to back, and it was like they ain't doing shit for me. Or what the fuck do I have a sponsor for? Yeah. So it was like I was trying to get him to understand that when we first met, bro, fuck a sponsor. Yeah. We don't need it. Don't worry about that <laughs> shit. Let's continue doing what we're doing. And yeah. then we got not to arguments, but we would get into little battles where he thought that that's what we needed. Oh, we need to fight, bro. We're it. Stop worrying about that. <laughs> and now he understands. He like I told him the other day. We had fucking Larry Wilson's gym. Yeah, we walking into the door and I'm like, it's only twenty bucks for a day pass, but I'm like, shit, we're no, we're known now. I'm not paying for this fucking day pass. Like, I'm like, uh, can you have? Can you? Is where's Larry or Ryan at? She's like, oh, they just left. I'm like, do you mind texting one of them really fast and let them know Valley and Sean are here? She's like, yeah, they're just like, what's up? I'm like, I want to let them know that we're here. We're trying to get a workout. I'm like, I don't mm -hmm. mind paying the twenty five dollars, but I said, I, we're, like, I didn't say it to her, but in the back of my mind, like, shit, they know me. She texted them. Oh yeah, he said you're good. He's like, shit. 
I didn't think it was going to go as like that. I'm like, shit, I didn't either, but I definitely was going to try. Like, I know he knows who I am. Mm. Like, the fuck? Like, the least we can do is try. But then also, like, I don't know. When we got in there, I was telling him, like, I don't know, man. We just, we definitely, like, <laughs> being together, I see that uh, the dynamic of what we were putting together is definitely, like, changing me. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, 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 I don't know how to explain it, man. Um, yeah, there's a lot of positivity um, within the fitness community coming towards us. Um, people, and this is what, I, I, I can fucking talk all day about this shit. I love stories. And the people that are, are supporting us, they see the journey that we're on and they are completely 100% invested. They want to see where we get to. And the sky is truly the and limit. And it's so funny. Like he said, it's like, we're, we're, we're praised. Like we won. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And I am like, I, I don't even, we consider, did I don't, in I don't, a way. I, yeah. and we definitely did. Yeah. But I don't consider myself a loser. Cause we definitely yeah. won the night. Like I don't yeah. fuck with nobody. Said, I won that night. Like yeah, he did. these he motherfuckers did. still talk about that glove that I put on. Cause I did my show. I, I did Michael Jackson, um, dirty Diana, but I put on a Michael glove and nobody else. Was, you're not supposed to put props or anything like that on the stage, but I did it anyway, because I wanted to still the show. Oh, and I, I, I'm telling you, I heard a, a week ago, so one of the dudes that were at the show that was on the, doing the same show, he was like, man, they were talking about some dude with some glove, da, 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 da. and I'm like, bro, that was me. <laughs> was like, <laughs> he didn't even fucking know it was me, but it was like, I love it because mm -hmm. like that's why I do or did what I did because I yeah. want to make a lasting impression on motherfuckers. When I get on that stage every time, now I've been thinking about how the fuck am I going to up that without bringing a fucking prop right. now because I'm I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to. I don't yeah. know how, but I'm going <laughs> to fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about this documentary you guys are working on. Absolutely. Uh, I want to know the main message behind this documentary that you guys are trying to portray. We spoke on, on it a little bit, mm -hmm. but... First of all, do you guys have a name for this documentary? Is that something you guys have That's thought funny, about? Because I literally about that. Tell him what. Tentatively, it's called uh, "Naturally Gifted: The Rise of Natural Bodybuilding." Mm -hmm. That's okay. Tentative so, is this something that you guys can imagine being maybe like on Netflix Hell or, yeah. or where? Absolutely. Where are you guys thinking of putting yeah. this? Everywhere. Yeah, uh, everywhere you can put this motherfucker. Yeah, Netflix is a great example. Um, one documentary that I'm kind of borrowing the format from is uh, McGregor Forever, yeah. which is, I believe, it's a four part uh, documentary, and, and I it's see, dope. yeah, it, it is good. And what I like about that documentary and, and what I want to take from it is that they're following Conor McGregor in real time mm -hmm. while they're still kind of backtracking and showing nobody. His, yeah. <laughs> showing like, and you know, what's so cool about it is that he had the same mentality even when he was starting yep. before he became the UFC champion, before he became the double champ, he still had that mentality that he was going to do all these things. And that's the purpose of this documentary is to show that we his are- mentality ain't going to ever change. Yeah. Yeah. And we're calling it like we see it. Like we we know exactly where we're going to end up. And to actually- Like what's crazy, other control was crazy is like everybody that we've talked to keeps coming to the table like, man, y'all did exactly what y'all said y'all was going to do. Yeah. Y'all did exactly what y'all said y'all was going to do. People love that. We were talking about this shit for months, man. We go, I'm, I won that show three weeks ago before mm -hmm. the show. That's what I was telling myself. Like, I already won the show. I had a dream. I won the show already. Yeah. Like yeah. that's just how far I was taking this shit because I'm like- you you gotta believe this shit. You don't do anything that you're doing in life and 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 half step. Because mm -hmm. when you half step, you you have a doubt of a slight doubt of belief in anything that you're doing. You're bound to fail and, for and, sure. And to better answer your question as to like what the actual message is, uh, the reason why the documentary like came up is because if Arnold Schwarzenegger and Pumping Iron put bodybuilding on the map and like, okay, so Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's a, he's a poster child for bodybuilding. See what it is. And then they use the documentary of Pumping Iron to promote him and the sport. We're doing the same exact thing with our documentary. We are the faces of natural bodybuilding and this documentary is used to promote ourselves and the sport of natural bodybuilding, just like Pumping Iron. Incredible. And what motivated you guys to start on this journey of building this documentary? Um, I saw a vacancy. I saw a vacancy. Honestly, like my motivation came from hopping on uh, Instagram and whenever you see a nice physique, the comments are saying- He's on steroids. Not natty, not <laughs> natty. Even when it comes to a person who is adamant, lifetime natural, and then you're you're looking at the comments saying, oh, well, you're, why are you lying to your audience? And that is really where, where my motivation came from. This is bullshit. This is because I look at my physique and I've got a great freaking physique. So for a person to say, I, it's like, it's and not you know natural. I said, not the kids that I said earlier that I don't even want to change the narrative how people, I'm glad that he was thinking that because we probably would have never met. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, if he was thinking the way I thought, we probably would have never met. Yeah, no, this is, this is a, a true vendetta. And again, I'm, I'm not attacking anyone. It's more about like, I have an issue with limiting beliefs. If there's anything like my philosophy is 
we have the potential as within the human spirit to achieve whatever we imagine. Okay, so for anyone to say that you can't achieve something naturally is in direct contrast to how I believe so we can just the world say is. This. The, 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 pretty much the, the message of the movie is to make people a believer. Yeah, to yeah, to believe of, of, of what, what what's that, possible. Has both of your mindsets always been, I want to be natty, or has there ever been- Great question. One time where Great you're question. like, yeah. maybe I should try this. I'll answer this first. All right, yeah. Great question. For me, look. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because like when you ask that question to natural bodybuilders, there are a lot of people, like, you know, everyone's thought about it. Everyone's thought about it. I've never thought about it ever. Not once. For me, like I've never even like thought of what I'm doing as something that I was going to be doing. Like I've never thought or saw myself as even in a, in a fitness setting for my life. Like that's not something that I planned on doing. It just worked <laughs> where God kind of took me. Um, I will say I never thought about steroids because I didn't even really like growing up as a kid. I didn't even know what steroids were in a sense, but there was shit that was circling around on the internet like that I couldn't get access to. But I heard a lot of my friends talking about like HGH, mm. health hormones. I was fucking 4'11 like in ninth grade. Alone. I was 4'11 in ninth grade. I was a fucking fast ass running back. I was, so you hearing, oh, you can find a way to take some pills or take this and you can grow. So I started looking at this shit, but I never wanted to take it because for one, I didn't have the money that that shit was priced at and my parents ain't going to buy this shit for me. So that was already out. And as I became myself, I became who I was supposed to be anyway. Mm. Growing through sports, I became what I thought that I was, even if I didn't have the height. <laughs> I had everything that every kid wanted just didn't have the height and I was okay with that. So as I got older, shit, I'm comfortable with who I am. So I've never, in the setting where I'm at now as a grown man, I've never thought to even want to put something in my body because I'm I'm happy with who I am. Great. You know saying? Growing up as a kid, you you have those psychological yeah. things where like, you're not, I'm not happy with this short being this, but that was just me being a kid. So what's some advice you guys would give someone that's young that is on the fence of starting to take steroids. Yeah. And this I'll I'll tie in both questions because I didn't really get to answer the 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 last one. Yeah. Um my whole thing is I am a firm believer in the limitless potential of uh humans. And it again it negates to to take something, to take an external source and use that to kind of improve yourself lies in direct contrast to how I believe we as humans can achieve things. So it's all about the inherent, like what are you capable of achieving naturally? On your own. Yeah, yeah, on your own. So that would be my my message to the youth. And that, that is my message to the youth. What can you achieve within yourself? It's less about the physical uh, achievement, but more so what happens mentally when you actually pursue a goal and actually see the transformation that occurs in real life through your physique through the habits that you actually take on as you continue to pursue this 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 passion. So yeah, that would be my answer. And last thing uh, on steroids, yeah. steroids, right? Once you start taking steroids, mm -hmm. is, is that something you have to keep doing to keep keep it going? Um, no. no, you don't, but no. yeah. You can stop. You yeah. definitely can, but and I then feel go like back to natural. In mm, fact, I don't feel like you can go back to natural. I, I don't, but that's that's the difference between a lifetime natural and a person who used to take steroids. And then, okay, so you, you take um, NPC, IFBB is like that's the biggest bodybuilding federation. Then you have natural federations like INBA or WBN, uh, WNBF. In those federations, the way that they test is they can't test for lifetime naturals. You, you just don't have the ability. Instead, um, the way that they test is, have you taken steroids within the last seven years? And if you haven't, then you're considered natural. Um, so to answer your question, yeah, you could hop on steroids and do a cycle or do however many cycles. And if you don't do them for seven years, you could be considered natural and you'd be able to compete in natural federations. That's I'm I'm advocating for lifetime natural again because it's coming from a place of philosophically I believe that why 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 bother you don't need them if if what your goal is to achieve is a great physique but I don't me personally <clears throat> I don't think anybody that's ever like competed and done steroids hops off and tries to compete or tries to stay at that level only because most of those dudes it's like us like you you get <laughs> start looking at yourself getting smaller. And you were once just this mm. big ass Hulk playing that mental game with yourself. You're definitely going to start fucking with that yeah, shit again. Yeah. So I don't see anybody that compete on this shit hopping off. I don't. 
Yeah. So what are some personal goals that you guys have? Uh, for example, like maybe competing more, how often would you guys want to compete mm -hmm. or any other personal goals that you guys have? Sean, yeah. let's start with you. Okay. Um, so our next show is going to be in November. Um, our goal, our next goal is to get a pro card within the IFBB uh, Federation. So basically uh, ascending that rank between amateur and going into the professional uh, status. Uh, from there, I really want to hit the ground running as a professional bodybuilder and say, hey, we did this naturally, and now we are competing against other natural and enhanced athletes as professional bodybuilders. And look, you can do it too. So like, that's the next thing. How, how many times do we want to compete? Um, I've said already, I'm looking estimate like eight years. I would say that's like the minimum amount of years I would be committing to, uh, to bodybuilding. I would really want to get on stage once or twice every year. And I'm, I'm saying that because there, growth. Is, yeah, growth. There's a lot of size that I have the intention of putting on, on my body. We and got eight years to do this shit. Exactly, man. exactly. So in 2025, I really only want to compete one time and that would be towards the end of the year, which would give me the, the majority of next year to bulk and get bigger. Give us a full year because our next show is the next show is November. Our next yeah. show after that would be November. Exactly. So we have a full year. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, like I said, once or twice a year with the intention of, of beating my last physique every single time. For me, man, uh, like you said, getting that pro card and just um, be really becoming the face of this shit. Yeah. Um, my biggest goal is to uh, be able to help the people that's helped me along this journey. Um, like the people that actually see and believe, like I walked in and told you, like it's dope to have people that actually see the vision. Like our coach just takes steroids, but he loves our message, loves what we promote, love what we got going on. And to have people that are on the other side of what we're doing, actually helping us and trying to get us to be better. Shit, I'm just, I'm just trying to, uh, trying to make this shit full circle. Because at the end of the day, the uh, fitness community is supposed to be one. So I got told him a couple of weeks ago, like I finally figured it out. Like that's why I don't want to take the narrative where we're trying to bash the other part, the counterpart, and the people that take steroids or PEDs because it's like fitness is supposed to be a community where everybody's trying to learn, trying to grow. Everybody has a troubled past. Everybody has something. That's why we all are in the gym in the first place. So I want to bridge the gap. I just want, we want to be the face of this shit over here too, but we want to be able to share the stage with you guys and mm -hmm. make it a collective community because yeah. that's what it's supposed to be about. Yeah. Well said. Great. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap up, where can people find you guys on social media? Um, my name is Sean Fury and that's kind of my handle on everything. S-H-A-U-N-F-U-R-Y. Yes, it is my real name. And yes, my brother's name is Nick Fury, coincidentally. Uh. <laughs> Uh, you can find me on <clears throat> Valley Muscle across every platform. Uh, that's Valley, V-A-L-L-E-Y-Y. -Y. Yes, two Ys, Muscle. Um, and besides that, we got a joint page, uh, TikTok, 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 YouTube, Instagram. and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And that's Valley Fury. So V-A-L-L-E-Y-Y, -Y, Fury, F-U-R-Y. Yeah. So is there anything else you guys would like to say to your audience? One thing I, I didn't leave out in this podcast, and I would be remiss to not to not say it. I am aiming to be the greatest natural bodybuilder of all time. Let's go. Kind of sucks because <laughs> <laughs> I set him up. It kind of sucks. Like he does this to me all the time. But I already, we we already know. I mean, we want me to put we give the analogy for them on this camera because I can do it. Because where are you from? Where was I where born? Where you born? Where you from? I was born in Mexico. Okay. Well, I'm saying, Bless. how long you been in California? Then? Uh, been here since 2013. Okay. So you know so the freeways really well, right? I mean, I use Google Maps all, all right, the time. So but look, okay, well, look, the 405. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the 405, folks. I am, where am I at now? I'm getting to LAX, La Cienega, where, wow. you know, I'm getting up there now. So he's making Sean, progress. Sean ain't even crossed over to where he sees the 10. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, <laughs> he ain't even got off of where Wilshire and shit is at. So and it's like, Sean has to grow his legs yeah. to even be able to compete with yeah, me. Yeah. So again, 100%. So he's, he's again, right. he has to get through me <laughs> to be that, which I'm not saying he won't be able to do that. It's going to take years. It's going to you know, take years. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. while he's working down in the lower yeah. levels, yeah. I'm going to have my crown, you know what yeah, I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> waiting to be dethroned. Yeah. I but love the, it. The fun, the funny, funny shit that's about this, though, is like, we we had it spinning like we don't we definitely don't have like this mantra where we like if he wins it's fuck you or you win right. like 
if it when it does come down to that. Because like I told him the other day, bro, I can win, you can win. We we both have our own fans, and we have fans that like both of us. Those are the people that's gonna make that's who yeah. that's who give us the name. Yeah. We can't we can sit here and say, oh, I'm the greatest, I'm this, I'm that. But the people are the ones that's gonna decide. And yeah. that's what's gonna be the funny. We can just sit back and watch them comments like, damn, they think you're the best, or they think I'm so that's what like you know and, what I'm and that's and what's you gonna know, be the beauty of this shit. People love healthy competition. You know, they love Tom Brady versus Peyton Manning. They love Sean Fury versus Valley Moss. It's, it's less of a verse because it's not even legitimate yet. I, I mean, well, I'm being completely honest. I'm not competing against Valley because I haven't grown my legs. So I'm in a different division. I'm in the division with the board shorts. But the way that I want to end the documentary, I want to share the stage <laughs> with this guy. I want to be right next to this guy. And that's how I want to end the documentary. And shit, we might even end it like ambiguous where it's like, we don't know who won. Yeah, <laughs> like we might even do that. Do that. Too. But on I the am, next episode. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I want to be right next to this guy. Um, and that's how I, I want to end my career. Yeah. I think at the, at the end of the day, you're competing against yourself, right? And you're always trying to be sure. level up and be a better person, yeah. whether it's bodybuilding or anything in 100%. life. But guys, sure. I love your guys' movement. I love your your ambition, your energy, uh, your guys' dynamic friendship. It is dope. And I want to thank you guys for coming to the Absolutely. studio and being on my podcast and sharing your story and your journey and i can't wait to see what you guys do and see your documentary i think maybe we should have you guys back maybe i don't know later on and see where you guys are uh, yeah. and and see see what you guys have achieved oh we're making progress all the time so yeah. we'll always have something more to talk and we'd about. we'd be down to come back bro yeah. we'd definitely be down for sure great well i want to thank you guys for coming one more time and guys Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and check out westcoastcreativestudio.com. Check out our studio. You can book it. Check out our website. Follow us on Instagram. Make sure to follow these guys as well. Follow their journey uh, in the natty world. I love what you guys are doing. And once again, thanks for coming. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.